a meeting to order? Mr. Fincher, would you please do the invocations? And we'll stand for the pledge. That's great. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for the opportunity to serve you in this community in this capacity. Guide and direct our thoughts and we'll be pleasing to you. And I ask this uh, safety for the committee as they return home today. And I thank you for their input to help us do a better job. For I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll entertain a motion that we approve the agenda as presented. I'll make a motion that we approve the agenda. A motion is made by Mr. Coward. Is there a second? Yes. Seconded by Dr. Fincher. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. 5-0. Next, we will move on to the um, Advanced Ed External Review Team um, exit report, and we'd like to introduce all of them to everyone. And if you would come up, and I have um, a little token from Pickens County that we'd like to send you home with. Um, the lead evaluator is Dr. Mike Griffith. Dr. Christy Tucker. Sherry McAllister. Rob Kittle. And Joshua Laney. They've done a great job for us this week, and we certainly do appreciate your being in our school system, and we thank you for the work that you did on behalf of our children and our staff and our school district. Thank you so much. Thank you, Board Chairman Lowe, uh, members of the Pickens County School Board, Superintendent Perry, uh, District Administrators, um, faculty, staff, and invited guests. Uh, let me first say it is truly a pleasure to be with you. It has been a pleasure for the last three days. Typically, I will say the lodging has been pleasant, the meals have been good, and we appreciate all those accommodations. In your case, the lodging has been charming, and I don't think I need to comment on Hans's meals. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I've gained any weight. Typically, I don't gain weight, but I sure feel a lot heavier. Uh, but it's been a delightful um, stay with you in a beautiful area of Georgia. And, uh, not that I'm putting in a plug for Hans, but he is a wonderful ambassador for your school district. Uh, he says many kind things about you and obviously is a real soldier for those things that you're doing, and I wanted you to know that. Um, <clears throat> as you are aware, the time we have spent with you, we've done a number of things to uh, gather the evidence that we thought was essential uh, through listening to you through reading documents that you have produced and through observing in your classrooms to arrive at a conclusion about the extent to which we believe as a visiting committee called an external review committee that you meet the evidence indicators which together represent the five standards of this accreditation body. Um, it has been obvious to us that you have worked 
uh, very hard for likely a year, perhaps more or a little less, but nonetheless, it hasn't been a short undertaking for you to prepare for reaccreditation. And we recognize that. Um, in two and a half days, uh, I want to tell you all that these four folks uh, that are on this team have worked equally hard from sometime before sunrise until well after sunset to ensure that to the extent possible, we have given you the fairest representation and feedback that we could give you in that brief period of time and we hope you interpret with some uh, explanation on my part the results that we're going to give back to you. Again, thank you for your uh, welcoming spirit and attitude here and we will uh, move forward. I'm going to work through these slides uh, up to the meat of this PowerPoint fairly quickly with a few comments about accreditation uh, most of which most of you are going to know, especially those of you who are employed or have been affiliated with the school system. Accreditation, an international protocol for institutions committed to systemic, systematic, and sustainable improvement. Um, systemic in the sense that our hope is that those things that evolve from the self-study that are recognized as needs for a continuous improvement process become embedded as a part of that process so that one doesn't ordinarily have to think about doing them. It's just automatic. They become systematic and there is through the sustainability piece some life expectancy to the practices that are um, adopted and implemented uh, as a part of this process. The intent is to build capacity, always to build capacity to improve, and to stimulate and improve effectiveness and efficiency through the, throughout the institution. <clears throat> Balanced accreditation, uh, it is an analysis and impact of the evaluation of teaching and learning, of leadership capacity, and uh, resource utilization. We are like you. Uh, all of us are colleagues. We come to you as either current employees of school districts or in my case, in my very distant past, an employee of a school district, one or more school districts. Um, and your personnel here in the district are asked to do the same thing for other districts, not only in the state of Georgia, but in other states, uh, in the 37 states that make up Advance Ed. Um, and that's who we are, uh, professionals with diverse experience, and we have principals, we have um, uh, career and technical education directors who've been a former high school principal, and I've been a high school principal and an elementary principal and um, a college professor for 20 plus years. Um, but still connected very strongly and regularly to public education throughout that time. Determines the institution's effectiveness in meeting the requirements, both the standards and the protocol of the Advanced Ed Commission. What do we do? Based on our best estimate of the extent to which you meet, we believe you meet the standards and protocol, we provide analysis and evaluation, and the purpose of today satisfies the last bullet point, which is to deliver our feedback, we hope it is valuable, uh, and direction for improvement to you as a result of our two and one half days with you. <clears throat> Throughout the last two days, we spent with you, we have interviewed 187 of you. 18 of your administrators, uh, both 
at the central office as well as school-based, 45 teachers, 10 support staff. Uh, don't know about the others, but I interviewed about two dozen delightful youngsters. Uh, one of which uh, I told him I appreciated him chairing the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Because he did. And I say that in the most positive sense of the word. He just looked like a kind of a sort of takeover kind of guy. And, 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 and it was pleasing to talk with all of them. And you would be proud uh, about how they represented you. From the kindergarten children, at least where I'm concerned, to the eighth graders. And the folks who went to other middle schools and to your high school uh, really reported the same findings there. Um, 38 parents and all five of your board members committed to spending time with us on Monday. Um, I don't want to say that's atypical, but at the same time, it's not always uh, an outcome of these visits. We hope to get at least a majority of the board. Uh, sometimes we're lucky to get everyone and even in a case or so we have interviewed the board in open session the same way that we interviewed the five of you in smaller groups to avoid the violation of the Sunshine Law. So it was a pleasure to interview all of you at the same time as well. And then during our Tuesday visit in your schools six of them, we conducted 46 effective learning observations uh, using the approved student engagement uh, instrument that Advance Ed requests that we use. The results of our learning environment ratings are, are these. And what I want to say to you is this, and if I've used, be very careful once, I've used it dozens of times. Be very, 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 very careful about how you interpret these numbers. And the reason I say that is this. The use of the Elliot has never been billed as an evaluation of instruction. That is not its purpose. So that's not what this is at all. And if you want to know precisely what it is, it is really a representation of a frequency count. We are simply asked to say, all right, observe the students, not the teachers. And based on the 38 or so indicators under the seven domains, simply record if you observe an event that squares with the indicator on the Elliott. If we did, and it was a fairly regular occurrence throughout the instructional lesson, it was a four. If we didn't observe it for some reason, it was a one. One doesn't mean it was rated low, one just means we didn't observe it during the 20 minute time bite we were in that room. Um, so you can see the numbers. You see the lowest one being digital learning environment. Again. All that means is that during that lesson, at the time we were in the classroom, and we were asked to check on the instrument, was it the beginning? Was it in the middle of the lesson to the extent that we could determine? Or was it at the end of the lesson? And you know much better than I, it all depends on when you enter a classroom as to what you're gonna see. And if the lesson was not conducive to the use of digital technology, we just got the luck of the draw. That's all we got. So that's how you should view these numbers. Not a rating of instruction, but simply a frequency count. And then an average based on a four to one Likert type scale of, of what we observed in terms of student engagement in some form of learning while we were in that classroom. Okay. <coughs> the index of educational quality. You didn't see this on your, your initial accreditation visit. 
because Advance Ed did not use it at the time. So I'm going to tell you what it represents, and then I'm going to give you my best estimate as to what these numbers mean. Advance Ed will have to figure that out because we don't know. So I'm only going to tell you based on the number of visits that I've conducted utilizing this part of this new standard and protocol over the last two years. And I'm going to begin below the index of educational quality. Teaching and learning impact. Score of 319 on a 100 to 400 scale. What that represents is a totaling of the evidence indicators under standards three, which is your curriculum standard, standard five, continuous improvement, and the student performance evaluative criteria. And all of the indicators combined, divided by the number, is how that score was determined. So we simply dropped the decimal place in 3.19 became 319. For leadership capacity, the same process is followed in the formula, except that is based on standard one, purpose and direction, standard two, governance and leadership, and the uh, feedback that you received from your stakeholder interviews. Um, and how you, you rated that. Um, and all of that combined to get a score of 358. And then standard four, which is resource utilization, stands on its own. Now, you might logically conclude that the index of educational quality is simply a totaling of 319, 358, and 338, and then dividing by three to get an average of 334. The formula does not do that. The formula then goes back and takes all of the indicators for standards one through five, 35 standards, or 35 evidence indicators, plus the indices under student diagnostics, four, and the indices under stakeholder diagnostics, two, and totals all of those up, divides by the number in that computes to what advanced <coughs> ed uses as, as the indicator necessary for initial or re-accreditation. Now, I don't know what 334 means, but what I would say to you is, I think it means a pretty good score. Um, many of the districts I've done, uh, visits that I've led over the last year, and two so far this year, you will be the third one. Uh, the scores are going to range, have ranged somewhere between 275 and about 310. So I really think you can be proud of that score, okay? And in fact, uh, all, of, all of those scores. Um, I hope they represent to you that five, I hope, objective pairs of eyes came to your district. And certainly, I did not know you. I knew you, where you were located, and that's about all I knew about you. And I read a little bit about you on your website, but I obviously didn't know much about you. We spent two and a half days with you, and it did not take us long. And we heard what you said about yourselves it did not take us long to conclude that, uh, yeah, they're probably right. And I hope that you see that reflected uh, in, in these scores. If we could score you on how nice you've been and how accommodating you've been, then we would go off the scale, but that's for another day. So take my comments for what they're worth in terms of what those numbers mean. But I think they're probably pretty good. Okay? Powerful practice. Advanced Ed asks us to do two things. One, 
if an evidence if an evidence indicator is rated as a one, we are required to give you a required action. Otherwise, it is at the discretion of the external review team about where we select areas for required actions based on twos, even based on threes. They also ask us to write statements that represent powerful practices for all fours that we give. And there were about, I think, if my memory serves me correct, 11 fours. So I'm going to have to go back to South Carolina and write nine more statements based on those 11 fours. So the intent here is to give you a flavor of the kinds of things that will likely emerge out of those statements. Uh, one, again, we recognize that you, uh, by reviewing your communications plan, the written evidence, by interviewing you and receiving feedback from you, primarily those two, uh, because we couldn't observe it, at least I don't think we did during two and a half days we were here, uh, we concluded that that was probably a pretty strong piece of what you do. You try to be as transparent, we've concluded, as it is reasonable to do so, while still protecting the confidentiality of those things that good sense, good policy, and statutory law requires you to protect. Otherwise, you seem to be a fairly open book, and this is intended to be a recognition of that. And there are some examples we wanted to say we, we're not just com commending you for, even though this is not called a commendation anymore, for having a good communications plan. <clears throat> but here are some of the things, some of many, that we think make up, and we learned that we, you don't call it Friday Focus, but uh, we gave that name, and I think you know what we mean. Um, your newspaper, and you seem to get pretty good coverage out of your newspaper favorable coverage, uh, fair coverage, and that's, that's always good to know. Some sites are not quite as lucky. <clears throat> and I offer a clarification on that. The lucky piece is objective versus unobjective. And from what we've determined, the paper seems to be very objective and fair in how they report about the news related to the county. Social media, you use Facebook, you use Twitter. Um, power school parents, <coughs> parents have access to critical pieces of information about their children. Um, and we thought that was probably pretty strong. Uh, sound business management practices. Again, it's one thing to say you manage your affairs pretty well. But our intent is to say these are some of the things that we recognize as being central to how those business affairs are managed, that you continued with a what we would define as a regular calendar school year where others might not have been fortunate enough with their fiscal capability to do so. 180 days, you did not furlough any employees for any days. And in spite of that demand, you still maintained a fund cash balance. Somebody has to be looking after the books and making some pretty smart decisions, and we wanted you to recognize that and know that we recognized it as well. Okay. Opportunities for improvement. Uh, these are simply presented as they are headed. They do not come with advanced ed requirements that if you want to become and remain accredited, you got to do this. That's not what this means. Simply means that in speaking with you, in reading your documentation, and to some degree observing you, and to the extent possible, triangulating the evidence, we concluded that as time 
resources and need really presents that these are some areas that you might uh, might visit and shore up to improve things and continue to build that capacity to be a systemic, systematically sustainable <coughs> school system. Increase opportunities for acceleration through credit advancement, AP coursework, dual enrollment, articulation agreements with agencies and post-secondary institutions or other mechanisms. To implement a program evaluation process that will provide a comprehensive picture of the learning effectiveness of programs that impact learning. Um, our intent there as an opportunity simply says to you, you know, we recognize that there's a lot of new stuff going on. And we have asked you about what did you do with a lot of the old stuff? And do you continue to use a lot of the old stuff? And is the old stuff still relevant? The old stuff meaning the stuff you were doing before you implemented the new stuff. That's not very good educational, educationally appropriate language, but I think you get the point. And so what this is saying is Again, as time and resources permit themselves, take a look at some of the old stuff and determine if it's continuing to do what you hoped it would do when you spent the money and did all of the things necessary to implement it. And if it is, great. If it isn't, change it. And if all else fails, jettison it and move on. That's what this is intended to focus on. Um, thirdly, as we have spoken with you, especially during yesterday, and inquired about <clears throat> how you address vertical and horizontal alignment, much of the feedback we have received suggests that there is a lot of in-school activity going on. You you have conversations about what's going on within grade levels. You have conversations about what's going on across grade levels within the context of the school. But at critical transition points between fifth and sixth and between eighth and ninth, perhaps there is less of that. And we're simply saying we recognize and hope you recognize that there might be a benefit in having some conversations that are more regular. And we understand that some of the meetings that are now occurring on as part of this Friday focus is, is a beginning of that process. Okay. Last required action. Um, provide professional development for instructional support staff in instructional practices and the analysis, interpretation, and use of data to inform instruction and increase student achievement, I could add. In talking with many of you, we concluded that you likely do a fair amount of staff development in, in use of data. We looked at your professional development character, a, a calendar and plan, and uh, it's four, five, six pages. It's fairly extensive. You do a lot in a year's time. But we also concluded from what many of you said to us that that does not touch on everyone that has either direct or even in some cases indirect contact with the classroom, whether it's in the classroom or in support of the classroom, whatever the role happens to be, and there is some benefit, uh, even with your pair of pros, to have them develop some understanding of the fact that all those test norm test numbers and uh, individual test data that applies to each of the 4,343 students in the school district have some meaning that is not uh, totally unknown to them. Perhaps they could 
become more effective as supporters uh, in that classroom. So that's the foundation <clears throat> of required action one. Required action two, develop, implement, and evaluate a clearly defined process for analyzing data to determine student readiness for the next level. Uh, our thinking there, and I know the folks that visited in your high school, but even with, within the school uh, level, what indices do you usually use that lets you know for sure that the kindergartner is ready for the first, for the, the first for the second, the second for the third, and so on and so forth, to the 12th grade. But the next level also includes the exit end of this pre-K-12 process into what happens after graduation. Your vision statement, um, long enough to be meaningful, short enough to be remembered graduation and life preparation for all. And we talked with the faculties that I visited with yesterday about graduation. The 87.2% graduation rate that you experienced this past year. Well, that leaves 12.9%. And some of those, uh, your director of special ed clarified, uh, fell in that category. but for the most part, graduated after five or six years. And my question was, is that about a third of them? And the response certainly was no. So if there are 250 to 300 children who constitute the cohort, then that means that there are about 30 students. And if you separate out of that five or six students who might fall in the students with disabilities category, that still leaves 25 or so students um, that are doing something or need to be ready for something once they graduate. And I think this focus is on what is the district doing to prepare them in one way or another for whatever comes after, after uh, Pickens County Schools. So those are the two required actions. Um, next slide. This is what we will recommend to advance ed. This is what comes after today. Uh, this part of it obviously is complete. Um, I will produce a report on behalf of this committee over the next 10 days or so that will be submitted to advance action. <coughs> At the submission point, that report will go to a reader reviewer. And that person typically has in, uh, seven days or so to turn that report around. As a lead evaluator, I'm also a reader reviewer for other lead evaluators. And then the Alpharetta staff and others also are reader reviewers. Um, once the kinks are ironed out of the report, if there are any, then it goes back to the advanced ed um, accreditation office in Arizona. And it's reviewed one more time by one of their staff members. At the point of approval then, it is sent back to the district as an electronic copy. Probably will not get a hard copy, but an electronic copy. And it will be a copy for your information, but will not actually become official until June, when the commission meets and votes for all of the school, uh, a decision in behalf of all of the school districts that went through this process for the spring. It's twi twice a year. The fall approval process is in January. The spring process occurs in June. Um, and at that point, uh, you'll likely receive another banner to uh, hang on the wall. Okay? 
Again, it's been a pleasure to be with you on behalf of the, this committee. It's a very fine committee, I might add. Uh, we extend our appreciation to you, all of you, for your hospitality and wish you well. and it was it was a very enjoyable experience and it was really nice to meet all of you and um, to learn about where you've come from and to get here and to, just to get your insight sometimes it's really hard to see from the inside um, and having somebody from the outside to come in and, and show us those things is it's been very a very good experience so we really appreciate you taking your time to do that and we look forward to working on those suggestions don't we everybody <laughs> You know, one thing I wanted to happen was for you to honestly take a look at where we are and give us some good suggestions for where we can get up. And I, I think that we all have found that. And uh, we certainly do appreciate your hard work. And we're going to take these suggestions to heart. And we're going, we're going to start working because we are proud of where we are. And, and we're going to continue to be proud of where we're going to go in the next few years. Um, we have a tremendous responsibility to the children of this county and to the residents of this county. And so we're going to work diligently to make Pickens County Schools the best that it can be. So thank you so much. And we have some other people to thank. Don't so we have a special thank you. Uh, to everybody. From my people, yeah. To everybody. We do have a special thank you from everybody, but uh, my part of this is I want to say thank you to our students. Uh, they're a, a real a, important part of our stakeholder group. I think probably the most important, important part of our stakeholder group. We're extremely proud of all of our students and we thank them for being excellent representatives of our school district. The SACS team has been very complimentary about our students this week and about the work that they have done. So um, to our students we say thank you so much for the outstanding work that you have done this week and that you have done all year and will continue to do. Thank you. They gave me an easy one. Teachers. <laughs> I mean, beyond students, I mean, what would you have if you didn't have teachers? You, you wouldn't have 
a learning environment, you wouldn't have a school. And I think we have some great teachers. And it just goes beyond the the time and effort that they put in for preparing for the SACS visit. You know, they've, they've done the extra work to make sure we were ready for this visit. But then along with that, they still had to educate our kids. So I, I think they do a tremendous job. We're lucky to have every one of them. We are. But attention, you had a minister here something you I do. <laughs> and I thank each one of you, not just for what you've done getting ready for this week, but for every day you're doing your job, which makes it very important to educate the children of this county. And we support you, we appraise you, and we appreciate each one of you. Thank you. And I have the support staff. And I would like to thank all of you for all your hard work in preparation for our SACS visit. And by the way, you are the reason that everything runs smoothly and efficiently in our school systems every day. Thank you. Okay, I was looking for the boxing ring to walk around. Oh, yes, but I couldn't find it. But anyway, I want to thank the community and business partners. This is the group uh, that we realize that we have shared goals. We have common goals and we have shared goals. And these, these people are committed to the quality education for our children. Uh, they also support us financially sometimes and with services. Uh, the Pickens County School District is defined by its community. And we appreciate all they've done and we want to say thank you so much. system with safe, healthy, great environments for our students to be educated in and for us to work in is part of all of what we celebrate today and we thank you. And I am technology. Imagine that Joey. Thank you so much for all the technology folks and all they do. You know technology is a wonderful, wonderful thing and when we learn to rely upon it so much, it's kind of like when you don't have water. Technology gone, we really miss it. So I know all the technology staff has worked really, really hard, and we really appreciate all they do every day. Thank you. I'd like to thank School Nutrition, and I want a big thank you to them because they are here at the crack of dawn when I am still in the bed. So I appreciate you so much taking care of our kids and our staff and having those wonderful peanut butter cookies that we get every now and then at the central office. So we do appreciate you. And Emily, thank you for keeping it all straight. <laughs> and I'm here to thank our parents. Without our parents, we couldn't have the success in the school system that we do. Parents are our children's first teacher, and then they give their precious children to us to carry through the day. And they really support our school system. We have a wonderful community of parents in Pickens County. And I have the custodial staff who I am forever grateful for because I know my children are high maintenance. And you provide a safe, nurturing environment for them. And our staff, you make it a pleasure to come to work every day. So I do thank you. And I have our bus drivers. Our bus drivers probably have one of the most difficult jobs in the system. They place our babies on those buses, they take them to school, and they get them there safely. And you know, sometimes that smile of that bus driver may just set the tone for the day of that student. So thank you. And I would like to say thank you to our SROs for keeping our schools safe, our children safe, which is the most important gift <coughs> to make sure that our children are walking into a safe learning environment. So again, I want to thank our SROs for everything they do and all the calls that they go beyond their calling that they do. So we tried to give, to say to everyone, it, it, it does take everybody to make a school system successful, and, and we want to say thank you to everybody affiliated with the Pickens County Schools. 
And I think we need to stand with our balloons and give the Pickens County Schools a standing ovation. <laughs>